Dear experts, dear seminar participants, welcome to this first CEP webinar on the framework decisions 947 on transferring of probation orders and alternative sanctions and 829, the so-called European supervision order. My name is Maria Lindström. I work as a, a policy officer for CEP probation and is seconded from the Swedish Prison and Probation Service. This is a historical moment for CEP since it's our first webinar ever. So keep your fingers crossed for no technical failures. Uh, you will be able to ask questions to the speakers while the uh, questions function on your right side. Uh, and they will also have some questions for you that you can answer via the chat function. As you all, uh, I guess, know, CEP is working very hard to promote uh, the framework decision as, and the transfer of probation sentences in Europe. And this is one way for us to keep the network active in between our meetings. Another way is uh, our annual uh, questionnaire that will be sent out to the experts in the network within a week. I will very soon hand over to our speakers today, Mr. Johan Dornesco, professor at the University of Bucharest and Professor Esther Montero Perez de Tudela, um, professor at the University of Andalusia in Sevilla. Uh, they are two of Europe's leading experts on the framework decisions uh, and are both involved in the PONT project. Today we have Joanne with us from Dublin and Esther from Sevilla. So welcome, Joanne and Esther. Hello, hello everybody. Hello. Welcome. Welcome everybody. So, um, do you want to start, Joanne? No, ladies first. <laughs> well, I'm very happy to be here. It's a pleasure for me to be involved in the first uh, webinar of the CP. And uh, well, I'm Esther Montero Perez de Tudela. PhD in Criminology and a Senior Lecturer of the University Loyola Andalucía and Jurist of Penitentiary Institutions. And as Maria told, Ion and me, now he's going to introduce himself, we are involved in a POND project, Probation Observatory Training and Network, uh, focused on the implementation of the Frenchful Decision 947 and 829. So uh, during the last month, we have been hardly working on the um, implementation of different decisions and we detected several obstacles and difficulties in the implementation. And today we want to share with you uh, these findings and uh, also some solution and discuss with you about the results. So, Johan? Yes, my name is Johan Durnescu. Uh, I'm working at the University of Bucharest in, uh, in Romania. Uh, and I don't know what to say about being an expert in this framework decisions. Uh, I would like to introduce myself rather like a, like a, a mutual trust enthusiast <laughs> or uh, something like that, not as, a, not as an expert. As you all know, the use of these framework decisions, uh, especially the probation uh, transfer and the uh, European supervision order, is not very large yet. So um, it's quite um, uh, strange to speak about experts in this uh, in this field. However, as Esther emphasized already, uh, we tried to collect as much uh, information uh, as, uh, as possible and we are looking forward to share this information with you about obstacles uh, and also about opportunities and solutions. So once again, welcome and uh, let's uh, kick the start. Okay, so um, well, the aim of this presentation is to, to provide the participants and general overview about the obstacles and solutions around the French Food Decision 947 and 829 uh, has reflected in the literature. We did an in-deep literature review, I'm going to explain after. And also, uh, we want to share this uh, finding with you because we want to start thinking about the solutions and recommendations based, of course, on the POND project, the Probation Observatory Network and Training. So, the structure of this presentation, voila. I'm uh, well, my colleague, Johan, is going to speak uh, about the reasons behind the Penhu decisions, and he's going to do a short comparative overview of both Penhu decisions. 
me, I'm going to speak about the obstacles and difficulties in the literature. It's a um, it's very complex issue and very long. So we are going to share uh, some slides because um, his, Ioan is going to speak about the FEMBO decision 947 and me, I'm going to explain mainly the A29 because we detected a lot of difficulties in the in implementation of this process. And finally, I'm going to explain the possible solutions we detected and I would like to to discuss with you, uh, the participants, about the these solutions. What do you think about? So uh, let's start, Ivan. Yes. First of all, about the pond project. Uh, probably most of you who attended the previous uh, expert meetings uh, on uh, framework decisions know already about uh, pond. Pond is a is a uh, EU project. Um, aiming at uh, increasing the cross-border cooperation between uh, EU member states. Uh, in particular, trying to increase the awareness and the expertise using the, the, the two framework decisions that uh, we are talking about today, 947 and uh, 829. Uh, apart from uh, developing uh, awareness and expertise uh, with these two framework decisions, we are also hoping to create uh, a sustainable network of um, uh, experts uh, in this field that will be able to disseminate uh, at, uh, at the national level and at the European level their expertise in, uh, in this field. So this is what we are trying to do with, uh, with the PON project. Um, it's a project coordinated by University of Bucharest, but uh, we are working very closely with uh, our partners from uh, uh, Spain, uh, University of uh, Andalusia, um, with uh, Latvia, University of, uh, of Latvia, with the uh, Ministry of Justice in, uh, in Bremen, and of course, we, co we cooperate very closely with the uh, Confederation of uh, European Probation, with, uh, with CEP. Um, the main activities uh, that we, we try to, to deploy in order to achieve these uh, objectives are, first of all, to, to run a, a gap analysis, a training gap analysis, trying to look at uh, the competent authorities and how they, what sort of needs, what sort of training needs they feel like they have in order to, to uh, increase the use of the framework decisions. Uh, and then uh, we also, um, we have done already a, a deep, uh, in-depth literature review uh, and based on these two components, the training needs analysis and uh, the literature review, we intend to uh, elaborate a, a, a new manual that will actually cover all these kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, objectives that we, we want to, uh, to achieve. Uh, probably we will try to, to do a little bit more than that. We, um, we are thinking now about uh, preparing a sort of online uh, course as well, but this is something a little bit outside the, the, the project, but uh, very much linked to it. Uh, after developing this uh, e-manual, we want to develop, uh, to, to deliver the training, uh, and we want to deliver it on a kind of uh, regional network basis. For instance, um, uh, Romania will deliver training to together with um, to the competent authorities from Romania, Spain and Italy, because these are the countries uh, having a lot of business uh, with. Latvia will, will deliver training uh, to, uh, to the competent authorities and probation services from uh, Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia. And Germany will deliver training to the competent authorities and probation of, uh, officers uh, from Germany, Belgium and uh, France. So this is this is our plan. We want to uh, to con to really contribute to a better um, understanding of the framework decisions and uh, a more uh, let's say human rights based um, and humane uh, use of these uh, framework decisions. Uh, now I would suggest we move on to to the next. Uh, to the next slide, because uh, we will come back to the literature review a little bit later. Um, as we, we all know, the reasons behind the, frame, the, the two framework decisions are very much connected to the, to the presence of the, of the foreign prisoners in the European, uh, in the European, Euro, European Union prisons. Um, as you know, uh, a, a very large percentage of uh, foreigners uh, are uh, in the in the European uh, prisons, not only among the sentenced 
prisoners, but also among the pre-trial prisoners or remand prisoners, as they are called. And you can see this situation uh, much better in this uh, in this table. As you can see here, you have countries like Luxembourg or uh, Austria, where the percentage of uh, foreigners in prison is quite uh, quite high, 75%, 55.7%, and so on. And the same goes for the pre-trial prisoners. Um, in Luxembourg, again, we have 44.5% of the uh, of the prisoners uh, under pre-trial detention uh, and foreigners in the same uh, in the same time. Um, now, I think uh, we will go through this short comparative overview of the framework decisions. I will not go into uh, many details because looking at the or at the participants' uh, profile here, I can see that a lot of you are already familiar with, uh, uh, with, uh, with the framework decisions. I will just try to emphasize the, the main similarities and the main uh, differences between those two in order to clarify uh, to what extent they, they are alike, they are similar, and uh, to what extent they are quite uh, different. The rationale for both, as I mentioned already, is uh, the the um, uh, the high percentage of the foreign prisoners in uh, in the European uh, in the European prisons, um, and for the 947, we have already uh, a previous initiative adopted by the Council of Europe in 1964, the Convention on the Supervision of Conditional Resentenced or Conditional Release Prisoners, but unfortunately that instrument was not very popular. Um, by uh, the end of uh, last year, I think only 19, 19 states out of 47 um, uh, have adopted this uh, uh, this convention. If we look at the aims and the purposes of the of the two framework decisions, you will see that uh, they try they cover a little bit different grounds. For instance, for the first one, the the aim of the framework decision 947 is to enhance social rehabilitation. Uh, and um, uh, this objective is achieved by preserving, uh, preserving the family, social, and uh, uh, the linguistic ties, improving the monitoring of compliance, preventing recidivism, and protecting the victim and the public. On the contrary, if we look at the framework decision 829, we will see that the aim is not necessarily social rehabilitation or not directly, but to protect the victim and the general public to supervise the people while, uh, while awaiting trial, ensuring the due course of justice, ensuring equal treatment for non-residents, and therefore promoting alternatives to pre-trial detention, um, and of course, enhancing the right to liberty and presumption of, uh, of innocence. So as you can see, the, the aim and the purposes of these two framework decisions are somehow complementary to each other. If we are thinking about where the, the uh, probation or the um, uh, European supervision or the can be transferred, we will see that in both cases, the, um, the person can be transferred to the member state where the person is lawfully and ordinarily residing, where they want or uh, they want or they return already, or where the person, uh, is, while, while informed, consents to, to return in the case of uh, A to 9. Again, there is a, a very important um, and significant difference here. In the first case, the consent is a little bit uh, is, is assumed, but in the second case, uh, with uh, A to 9, the, the consent has to be informed and it, it has to be uh, expressed uh, explicitly. Of course, other member states can accept the transfer, uh, but uh, only in some uh, in some specific situations, uh, and only when they already uh, mentioned that they are willing to do so. Um, the characteristics of the of the transfer are pretty much the same. They they both use uh, the system of competent authorities, but in the in the case of eight to nine. Um, we also need to have a central authority, which uh, supposedly would make the the procedure a little bit faster and a, bit, a little bit clearer. In the case of uh, 947, we have 11 types of uh, probation measures that can be uh, they, that should be able to travel from one jurisdiction to another. But of course, the member states are free to add 
uh, other um, probation measures that they are willing to um, uh, to supervise. In the case of uh, A to nine, we have uh, six supervision measures that are obligatory, like the you know the obligation to report, not to enter different places, not to meet different people, and so on. But they can also um, show that they are willing to um, supervise other measures like. Um, treatment or um, uh, some some uh, payments uh, uh, if they are involved. The procedure is pretty much the same uh, because they use the system of uh, certificates. Uh, the, the certificates uh, need to be uh, filled out and um, accompanied by the sentence in the first case and by the uh, supervision measure in the, the decision in the second uh, in the second case. Um, in both cases, uh, European Judicial Network website uh, is very useful because they can provide very important information about what is likely to be the competent authority uh, in the executing state, and therefore uh, it's, it's easy for the issuing state competent authority to know where to send the, uh, the certificate together with the other documents. Uh, in the case of uh, eight to nine, uh, the um, uh, the certificate need to specify exactly the length of time, the the renewal, and the provisional length of the of time needed for the for the provisional measure. Uh, the time frame is pretty much uh, the same. In the first case, we have uh, sixty days uh, for for the executing state to decide, and then for the second. In the second case, for eight to nine, we have 20 days for decision and possibly another 20 days um, for um, in case of uh, delays. Um, we, in both cases, we have uh, the double criminality principle, the 32 uh, types of offenses where the, uh, the states um, are free to check or not uh, the, the double criminality. Uh, in the first case, when we speak about 947, um, the probation decision can be, or the alternative, uh, can be adapted in its nature and duration. Uh, and when we speak about 8 to 9, we can adapt only the nature that should be in line with the national legislation for the equivalent offense. And uh, as we have seen already in the, in the survey uh, that we have con uh, conducted in order to identify the training gaps, um, this adaptation raises some uh, some issues, especially when it comes to uh, eight to nine, um, because the national legislation for the equivalent offense should be taken into uh, into account. However, there are solutions around that, and what I think is really uh, crucial to mention here is that uh, both frame of decisions are um, talking about uh, the importance of communication and consultation. So for every um, um, decision, um, uh, consultation and communication between the competent authorities from the issuing state and the executing state should take place in order to, to, for these competent authorities to agree. Uh, when it comes to the grounds for, for non-recognition and uh, non-supervision, uh, uh, we, we have uh, in some, uh, we have for, for both uh, framework decisions, we have pretty much the same um, conditions like, for instance, when uh, uh, when the certificate uh, certificate is incomplete or is not um, uh, uh, completed in the right way, uh, if the person is not willing to return when it comes to nine four seven, when the measures mentioned in the probation measure or the alternative are not actually uh, among those eleven, and the executing state did not uh, made. Um, already a statement, a declaration that uh, it, it is willing to supervise more, or when the, um, uh, the probation decision uh, uh, le uh, lasts less than six months until uh, its end. And we will see later on when we will discuss about obstacles and difficulties. Uh, this uh, time, time uh, limit causes some kind of uh, uh, difficulties because usually probation decisions are quite short. Uh, when it comes to age to nine, uh, of course, we have nebis in idem condition, we have the, the situation of immunity. Uh, and again, in case of breach, uh, uh, it's, uh, when it is impossible for the executing um, uh, state to apply the European arrest warrant. But again, as I mentioned before, 
uh, most of these difficulties or most of these uh, incongruences can be tackled through consultation and communication between those two uh, competent authorities. This is, this is really uh, key for all these kind of, uh, um, let's say, asperities, because um, we have a huge diversity in, uh, um, uh, in, the, in the legislation uh, in Europe. Uh, and of course, we are really happy about that. We, we, uh, uh, we really enjoy this kind of diversity, but in the same time, this diversity causes uh, different difficulties when it comes to uh, harmonization, when it comes to mutual trust and so on. That's why communication, consultation and negotiation, let's say, are really, really uh, uh, important um, uh, principles. Uh, when it comes to uh, the law governing the supervision, uh, we have um, uh, significant differences between the, those two framework decisions. In the case of uh, 947, all the uh, subsequent uh, decisions, uh, except the alternative sentence if uh, custody is involved uh, in some cases, are taken by the executing state. Uh, and for the 829, uh, the, the subsequent uh, decisions are always taken by the uh, issuing state um, when it comes to renewal, modification, issuing the, of uh, arrest warrant and so on. Uh, all these kind of decisions are taken by the issuing state. Again, this is a very important uh, difference between those two frame of decisions. Uh, of course, uh, in the case of 8 to 9, the executive state is free to adapt or to refuse uh, the, um, the subsequent decisions. Uh, going back to the issue of um, uh, not, uh, uh, not implementing, uh, not enforcing the, the custody in case of breach, uh, I know again from the from the training gap analysis, this is this also causes big uh, uh, debates, uh, let's say among the the competent authorities, because sometimes if the uh, if in the executing state the custody is not available for a particular probation decision in case of breach, then uh, it's it's impossible for the for that uh, executing state to to implement custody, and therefore. Uh, they need to transfer back the jurisdiction to the issuing state and therefore um, causes a lot of, um, and this procedure causes a lot of, uh, of, of let's say, uh, complex and uh, uh, unexpected uh, difficulties. The deadline for the implementation um, was um, uh, December 2011 and December 2012. It took a little bit longer for a lot of uh, uh, states to uh, transpose the framework decisions into their own um, um, legislation, but however, uh, most of the European uh, uh, member states managed to do so, uh, except UK and Ireland uh, for 947 and um, Ireland for uh, 8 to 9. However, I know, uh, and I'm, I'm in Dublin now to check personally, uh, let's say, that um, it's just a matter of time until the parliament in uh, in Ireland will uh, will do so. It's uh, the process is uh, ongoing. So this is about uh, this is about uh, the framework decisions trying to cover in let's say 15 minutes or so the main similarities and uh, differences. Of course, there are a lot of details that can uh, that can cause different uh, difficulties in in practice. But I think we managed to cover the main ones. Yes, yes. However we should uh, take into account the fact that we have a chat button on the on the right hand side where you can start already asking questions uh, i guess uh, meanwhile esther will uh, take over and with her um, uh, feria voice will uh, continue with the next slide thank you very much okay so uh first of all all the data we are going to give uh, are basic on a in-depth literature review focus on the obstacles and difficulties in the implementation of the Defensive Decision 947 and 829. Uh, we also try to detect the good practice and, um, which uh, were the complex issues related to the implementation of these uh, Defensive Decisions. Uh, we collected also all the training materials we found and the, the training material we, we thought we could use for the e-manuals. 
And uh, we also um, focus on the practical and critical cases. Some practical cases related to the implementation of different decisions that we could see in some jurisprudence in the European Judicial Network meetings, etc. Uh, which were the inclusion criteria? Well, uh, we took into account all the articles, uh, scholar articles, academic papers, focusing on the uh, both mentioned extreme decisions. But it was very interesting all that we found in the grey literature. And there, there are several uh, international projects focused on the implementation of the framework decisions, very interesting. And it was very important also for us, the report of the international agencies, NGOs, uh, organizations, all the reports, even the report of the European Commission, the European Union Agency uh, for Fundamental Rights, etc. We also took into account all the materials on the website uh, for the previous project. So with all these materials, we could see that we have common obstacles for the framework decision 947 and 829, and some specific obstacles for uh, the framework decisions uh, 947 and 829. So concerning the common obstacles, uh, we can differentiate among the theoretical issues, legislative issues, and practical issues. Uh, one of the things who was uh, was more um, I don't know impacting for me was the lack of uh, mutual trust behind the non-use of this federal decision. We found an important lack of mutual trust um, among the member states. Also, we could find that some terms uh, weren't clear for the competent authorities. The term alternative sanction was unclear. Uh, they can cover different concepts in the different member states. The ambiguity of a lawfully and ordinary resident, because, um, for example, how much time we have to spend in a country to be lawfully uh, resident, what happened with the people with that resident, all the people with uh, more than one residence or different nationalities. Uh, it was also quite um, representative of the uh, problems in the legislation, the regulation of the consent, because uh, the consent is a given for what? For the, the transfer, the sending of the certificate, the measure, what happened when there is an adaptation of the measure. Uh, it's necessary the consent again, because it's not regulated. Concerning the legislative uh, obstacles and difficulties, uh, we can highlight uh, several points. The discretionary power of the Asian state, it's not an ob obligation for the Asian state to send a certificate, even if asked by the uh, sentence for accused suspected person. There is no time limit for the proceeding in the Asian state. The time limit, so tight, 60 days and 20 days, starts once the certificate is sent, but what happened in the process in the Asian state? Sometimes take a lot of time. There is a lack of uh, obligation of the Asian state to inform the executive state about the behavior of the progress uh, of the accused or sentenced person. A lack of obligation of the Asian state also to inform uh, to the offender about the conditions of the implementation of the measure in the executive state. We found also difficulties um, concerning the mutual trust instrument in, in several cases. It was quite interesting, we are going to, to see after how in the country where they have a good uh, diplomatic relationships, uh, the transfer was quite, um, no easy, but easier. And when there are political barriers, it was very complicated. We found uh, also um, incorrect transposition of the criminal decision in some countries, especially related to the ground of refusal. Sometimes it was obligatory, uh, even they added uh, some new ground of refusals. And uh, in general, we didn't find uh, appeal positive in the transposition legislations. And concerning the, the practical obstacles, well, the most important, it was a lack of the awareness of the final decision and lack of training. 
Uh, it was very difficult to find authorities to be interviewed with because some of them even didn't know about this instrument. And when, when, when I explained it then about the instrument, they knew, but they have never been trained. And so in general, there is a lack of awareness about these kind of decisions and a lack of incentive to use this kind of decision. Why? Why they are going to use it is so complicated and they have no guarantees of the good implementation. For example, in the case of the A29 kind of decision, for the prosecutor were easier to keep the accused person or suspected in pretrial detention in the Israeli state. So uh, we also find um, several difficulties to identify the competent authority in the executing state and an important lack uh, absent of contact points. Difficulties uh, concerning the subsequent decisions, we have seen, as you all have explained, that a lot of uh, decisions after sending the certificate uh, are still under the competence of the issuing state. So this creates a lot of problems in the practice. Um, there is also a lack of access to the legal aid, uh, a huge bureaucracy. Apparently, this procedure were implemented to create a process easier, faster, but in practice, uh, one of the most important uh, complaints for the competent authorities was uh, the, the huge level of bureaucracy. The translation is used, still required for a lot of states. It takes a lot of time and a lot of forms. Um, the time li limits uh, in general uh, are not um, fulfilled, not compliant with the time limits. It takes a lot of more time, first because in the issue in this case is not regulated, and after sending the certificate, in general, any competent authority told us that they could um, comply with the time limits. Uh, the capacity issues in a lot of member states, these Congo decisions were transposed into the domestic uh, legislation, but um, without new uh, materials, human or financial resources. Uh, there is an important lack of information regarding the sentence person in the executive state and the difficulties to measure the rehabilitation prospect, how, how can we uh, measure where it's going to be better, the rehabilitation uh, process. Uh, there is not um, standards or items established in um, homogeneous in all the member states. So it was quite difficult, uh, difficult for some uh, competent authorities how to measure this. And finally, we found difficulties in uh, the adaptation of the sentence because the alternative measure um, under the federal decision 947 or 829, alternative to detention, are quite different uh, among the member states. So, in a lot of cases, it was quite difficult the adaptation of the sentence. Concerning the federal decision 947, Yuan? Yes, apart from this general, let's say, obstacles and difficulties uh, common to both, uh, let's say, federal decisions. We have uh, specific obstacles and difficulties um, around uh, each of these two uh, doc documents. Uh, for instance, the, if we speak about uh, the obstacles and um, uh, difficulties related to 947, we will see that again we have three categories of, uh, of difficulties, uh, the theoretical problems, legislative obstacles and practical problems. When it comes to theoretical problems, we have some difficulties in defining some terms that are in uh, in the text of 947. Uh, for example, the therapeutic treatment uh, or the mental uh, the the mentally ill. Uh, we don't we don't always know exactly what we mean, and we don't mean the same thing everywhere in uh, uh, in Europe. Um, and because of that, sometimes we have um, we have a practice. Um, that can lead to uh, to refusal of recognition and uh, supervision. For instance, when it comes to mentally ill, um, uh, when it comes to mentally ill uh, uh, offenders, 
in some countries, if they are not found guilty, they cannot be supervised by the probation service, and therefore they cannot be transferable under the uh, 947. Um, and the, of course, this is this is a, a very serious ground of uh, uh, of um, uh, of refusal. When it comes to legislative obstacles, um, we have a, we have some difficulties uh, around some interventions, like for example, medical treatment. We don't always know. Um, the, the procedure for, for some, some of these interventions, like for instance for medical treatment. Uh, we don't have a very clear procedure uh, about sensitive information. Uh, what sort of information can we transfer from one state to another, from the issuing state to executing state, especially when it comes to mentally ill persons or uh, uh, increasingly when it comes to, uh, let's say, uh, violent extremists or radicalized uh, offenders. What sort of sensitive information we can we can transfer, and what sort of information we should keep for for ourselves? Uh, again, as I mentioned already, um, for nine for seven, it is uh, the the duration of six months sometimes causes problems because um, in most cases, in most countries, especially when it comes uh, to to let's say general uh, generic supervision. The duration of the probation supervision is uh, usually very, uh, very short, sometimes around six months or one year. Um, and therefore, uh, this causes some problems uh, when it comes to, to uh, transfer. Uh, apart from these two categories, we have also practical problems, like for example, the subsequent decisions, especially when, uh, when the executing state is not, uh, is not able to impose custody in case of breach. Uh, the, the, com the the competence should go back to the to the competent authority of the of the issuing state, and this uh, of course causes some problems with um, uh, around communication, correspondence, uh, sometimes even uh, even costs, language problems. Um, of course, uh, we know that, and we know that from the comparative research, for instance, that sometimes we call things the same, but actually. Uh, we are covering uh, different realities. Uh, even the term probation means different things in different uh, uh, jurisdictions. There are situations when even for the concept of supervision, there is no equivalent in the, uh, in the executing state and therefore poses a lot of problems in terms of how to implement this, uh, uh, that particular uh, uh, measure. Uh, difficulties in adapting the sentence. Uh, again, we have uh, a few difficulties uh, around medical treatment, uh, especially when uh, when this medical treatment does not exist in the executing state, uh, or when that particular uh, treatment is regulated in a different way. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, in some states, for instance, uh, the the offender himself has to pay for for that. Uh, how shall we deal with that? Who should should cover the costs for that? It's, there are all sorts of uh, difficulties. Again, when it comes to the to the to the documents that should go uh, along with the certificate and the decision, um, sometimes it's very useful for the executing state to have the pre-sentence report or the pre-sanction report, as it is in uh, in Ireland. Um, and then again, this causes problems around uh, language, around translation, around um, you know different uh, realities for different uh, uh, words. Uh, again, when it comes to programs, sometimes we have difficulties because um, we have different programs in Europe. We don't have a kind of standardized uh, 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 inventory of programs that should uh, should be similar uh, across Europe. In some countries, we have very short programs. In some others, we have very long programs. We might call them the same, for instance, drink driving or, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, offending behavior. But the, the number of sessions, the time that it takes, the, the cost of implementation and so on are different in different uh, jurisdictions. Um, these are the, the main obstacles that were identified under the uh, 947. And uh, we think that uh, they are serious, and we have to take them into. Uh, they, we have to take them seriously, but we also think that uh, we can sort them out by consultation and by communication, by um, uh, uh, delivering more training, and uh, with a good faith and uh, believing in mutual trust principle, we will be able to overcome them.
But now we move on to the next uh, category of uh, options related to A to 9 this time. In addition, John, all these uh, language issues, translation issues, uh, sub-second decisions make the process longer and longer and longer for measures that normally are quite short. In the um, previous decision, A29, we found also some specific uh, problems. We selected the most important because, in fact, we uh, found uh, really more problems than expected at the beginning when we started this research. We didn't find a lot of um, report, a lot of article about this subject, and little by little we could find a lot of things and really more obstacles than expected at the beginning. So, concerning the legislative issues, I say more than expected at the beginning because uh, these frame decisions are not very used, but above all, this one, the A29, is the less used of the three frame decisions related to the criminal matters. So, concerning the legislative issues, there is an important lack of alternative to pre trial detention in the national legislation. The main problem to use it is that we are talking about the. Um, sorry? Ah, okay. Um, after we answer the questions, okay? Um, <clears throat> to use the decision A29, alternative to the question, we have first to have alternative to the trial And not all, all the member states have a lot of alternative. The second point is about the unlimited possibility of the issuing state of not apply the European supervision order, <clears throat> even if the suspected person asks for. In a lot of situations, the issue in the state decided not to use it because it's more um, safe or more sure to ensure the person, the accused person, to have it in the uh, issue in the state. Uh, also, um, there are different review procedures in the different member states. And for me, one of the most important factors were the cost. The costs are not very well regulated, and we are going to see in the practical factors that we are using a process because we think it's cheaper, always it's cheaper to have a person in a, in a, under an alternative sanction to have him or her uh, in perpetual detention. But if they have to go back to the United States for the judici judicial process, and they have to go and come back again and again, who is going to cover this cost? The issue in the state, the executive state, the person, what happened with the person without finance resources. So, uh, taking the advantage, I started to speak about the practical standards. One of the main problems we found is the overuse of the pet trial detention in general. How we have seen at the beginning of this presentation, my colleague Joan has shown you a um, table. Uh, there is an important, even worrying use uh, of the pretrial detention in other member states, and even more when we are talking about foreigners. The subsequent decisions after sending the certificate, in the case of this final decision, is in the most of the cases taken by the issue in state. So it causes a lot of huge practical problems. Third point the time limits for the alternative are quite short and it's different in different legislations. The member state normally, the, author, the competent authorities in the member state don't know uh, how much time is going to, to, to take, one or half is regulated, the, the time limit for each alternative measure. There are not clear procedural paths and different practice depending on the country, which create even more bureaucracy at the need of more consultation and credit consultation no information regarding the, the social situation of the suspect in the executive state. To send a person with an alternative measure, it's important to know uh, the residence, the domicile, where they live, uh, the family, and it's quite difficult to know it. It's necessary also for this consultation, and not, not always they have answered. There is um, also political barriers. I told at the beginning, uh, between uh, two member states, um, where they have a diplomatic relationship or political relationship is easier the possible, but uh, between countries without a good uh, political relationship, it um, well, the research result that it was more complicated. And finally, as I told at the beginning, the eventual cost of the transfer 
and this and the custody. Uh, currently, still, um, for the judicial process, we need the person of the suspected. Even if uh, we are developing a lot of uh, telematic ways, uh, telematic tools uh, to interview the person, to take the declarations and so on, still today, we need to have the accused, the suspected persons, during the process in several moments of the process. And it uh, encompasses the fact that we have to transfer the person again and again, who covered the process. So, after uh, analyze, uh, analyze all the obstacles detected, we can advance some uh, possible solutions and recommendations. But first of all, it's uh, necessary to announce the awareness about this uh, decision among competent authorities. And also among uh, all the actors involved in the process, the agencies, the lawyers. The role of the lawyer would be very, very useful and important if they know about this decision, advising uh, the offender and asking, requesting, demanding the competent authority to use these tools. Uh, the second point is necessary uh, in terms of training at national and international level. Even in the uh, expo meeting organized by the CEP, we could see uh, the last one, one of the most important points, in my opinion, uh, of the survey implemented by the CEP was precisely that the most of the countries have not training about this kind of decision, especially about the kind of decision 829. The third point uh, we think is quite um, important, facilitate the contact between competent authorities, develop networks, websites, etc., handbooks, and improve the quality of the certificate. It would be great uh, to provide more information about the alternatives, probation measures and sanctions, but also alternative uh, measures, alternative to detention. Um, for example, updated websites. Facilitate access to the lawyers and encourage the awareness and involvement in the process, especially in the, concerning the European supervision order. Um, formal agreement on cost, who is going to pay when, for what, strengthening uh, the exchange of information, how the measures are implemented in the different member states, for how much time, time minutes, etc. Increase the research and disseminate, of course, the results. We are here for that. And um, better data collection and European level. And uh, with that, um, we are. This is the most important solution and recommendation. With the future report that you can find in our website, point. But I think uh, this is the, the most important point for the research. Ivan. Yes. What I would like to to, to say now is, uh, as you you started to to mention already. For more information and for more details about uh, the difficulties and obstacles uh, related to framework decision, you can visit our website. Uh, our project website is uh, www.probationobservatory.eu, where you can find the whole, the full report of the literature review, and therefore you will find more examples and more um, more detailed information about um, this uh, obstacle, difficulties, and recommendations that we were able to. To, um, to identify in the literature. Now I think it's uh, it's uh, it's time to, to move to, to the to the next uh, section of our um, uh, meeting uh, to the question, and uh, it's very nice to see uh, a question already uh, posted. Do you think it is possible to draft standard definition for probation activities? Yeah. Uh, that's a very good. Uh, that's a very good question. Um, and um, in my opinion, I think um, we started already to do that, uh, and we have um, we have the the Council of Europe uh, recommendations that already defined the uh, the community sanctions and measures 
and we also have the, the recommendation dealing with um, uh, you know European probation rules and of course we started to develop a common understanding of uh, what probation is and what probation activities should look like and so on but this is a very long process and um, uh, we still we have to be careful and to move um, with cautious in order to avoid uh, uh, mistakes because as I said uh, the diversity is still huge in Europe and this is uh, the, the beauty of our continent um, therefore we need to to, to move uh, cautiously in order to take on board all these difficult uh, diversities and uh, all these uh, uh, differences and similarities but probably Esther you would like to add something to this yes uh, well we didn't take part of the project but the other 14 participants it would be great if they can share with us their knowledge, maybe training and experience with this friendly decision, if they saw or found other obstacles and difficulties, if um, they can recommend some good practice, um, just their experience with this friendly decision, it would be great for us mm. because all the information is useful, especially concerning the second one, the A29, it was really, really, really difficult find people using it. Yes. I wonder if we have more questions for from our uh, colleagues. Not yet. Maybe okay. If uh, if not, uh, I would like to have a question for our um, uh, participants, if possible. Uh, for instance, um, can you briefly? Let us know if uh, if you have any idea uh, if uh, the framing decision eight to nine was uh, was used in your uh, in your jurisdiction. Yeah. Jerry. Yeah, Jerry. Thank you very much, Jerry. Yes, I understand that everybody can see the the chat and the questions. So. Uh, we have a we have a nice message from uh, from Jerry. I will go personally to thank him. Hopefully, he's in his office, uh, so I'm very close to him. Okay. Uh, now we have one more question. Do you think it's uh, it is so difficult to share medical information regarding mental and illness? Uh, the dictionary is well known. Uh, diagnostic instrument uh, used all over the world. Well, um, with, with the diagnostic instruments and the risk assessment instruments and so on, we are still in a, in a very uh, incipient uh, stage. We still have a lot of instruments available. Uh, almost every jurisdiction developed its own uh, 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 instrument and therefore dialogue is still quite uh, cumbersome, quite, uh, quite difficult. Uh, but as you mentioned already here, Willem, uh, we still, although we have dictionaries and we have a lot of uh, experience with uh, with mental health uh, in Europe, uh, we still don't have common definitions and common understanding of uh, of uh, different diagnostic, uh, diagnostics. Would you like to well, say I something? I think that um, we can find different uh, problems when I when I have to deal with uh, medical issues in the penal execution also with uh, genetic sanctions, I have always, always different problems. Concerning other member states, because they use other instruments different, sometimes it's quite difficult to have an homogeneous information. Secondly, because the medical service cannot use it to be asked to send any kind of information, and always they come up with a problem of data protection, which is not correct, because if the uh, sentenced person or the accused person is agreed, Apparently, there is no problem, but then they are not used. It. So I think it's a problem of practice. When we started to to carry this information with a kind of normality, I think everything will be okay. But now at the beginning, because we are at the beginning, honestly, if we look into the data, the use of this decision are quite low. Uh, it will be something normal in the future, maybe. But until now, the two main problems I found it was the obstacles related with the 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 way of or do the diagnostic and the different tools they, they use and the data protection. Yes, yes. 
Very good observation. We have one more question about how we can increase increase the participation of lawyers. Uh, I was thinking about that because I have this problem with the final decision 909 for the next month. I have an international meeting about this and I think I'm going to use the same <laughs> strategy, but I think uh, it's necessary to involve of the collegium. If uh, we, we get to do a little manual or brochure, something explaining how to do it and to include in the next uh, future projects, the um, lawyers, collegiums of the different member states, maybe we can get it. Because uh, first of all, information and um, common activities is the only way, because the most of the lawyers I ask it, or they don't know, or they know this exists, but it's so complicated to go into blah, 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 and they don't use. And I think it's crucial, because yeah. normally the lawyer know and master better the legislation than the suspected or the sentenced person. Yeah, yeah, especially when it comes to framing decision eight to nine, I think it's really essential to, to deliver some training to the, to the lawyers, and as we say, we can involve the bar associations in each country uh, and then uh, maybe as Jerry suggested in, her, in, his, um, uh, in his message we can uh, maybe develop some leaflets uh, where these framework decisions can be briefly explained uh, especially with the practicalities in order for the lawyers to be able to use it uh, in, a, in a very you know uh, active and uh, quick way. Let's see for the next project maybe we should uh do some network with the bar associations in the Spain lawyer colleagues. Yeah, yeah, it's um, there are think about that. there are things that we can uh, we can do. Yeah, thank you for the question about the lawyers because uh, usually they are not um, they are not very much on board with these uh, developments and uh, uh, that's a shame because uh, they can really contribute to, to a better use of this kind of decision. As I said, in particular for eight to nine, I think they, they can really, really uh, help a lot. Uh, it's mutual trust a key factor? Another question. Um, well, it is. It is. And I think, um, as, as um, uh, Esther already mentioned, uh, mutual trust is uh, in in these documents is uh, is uh, already assumed. It's like it is there, and what we have to do is to move on and use it. But uh, in practice, we saw that it's not uh, it's not always like that. Uh, and I think we need to do more work um, for the competent authorities to develop this mutual trust. Probably mutual trust is not something that you have or you don't have. Probably it's uh, it's something that is gradual. It can be more or less mutual trust. And I think we have to work a little bit more in order to increase the level of mutual trust among the member states. Uh, and we can do that by uh, training, by joint activities, uh, like we try to do the joint training between competent authorities from different countries in the same room, so they can put a face in front of the uh, for, for every person and then they can start having a, uh, not only an institutional and cold relationship but also uh, a kind of direct uh, connection so on so we can we can we can develop this mutual trust um, we don't have to assume it all the time I think I think there is an important lack of mutual trust especially for the framework decision 829 because we are not used to, to give this um, trust all the member states that they are going to uh, supervise our suspected and the prosecutor recognize in several projects that they are used to use the petrol annotation because it's safer for them. They have the person there. For the 947, I'm not sure if uh, it's my point of view after read all the literature review, the project and so on. I think rather than mutual trust, the problem is that normally the probation measures and sanctions are quite short, and it's a lot of work, it's a very long procedure for a little measure, for telling some, I don't know how to explain myself very well with my feria voice. But um, the mutual trust was something very, very um, impactful for me, the lack of mutual trust, with the federal decision in 29. It was 
I don't know, but the, the judiciary, the, the prosecutors, seems to think that it's um, more safe, safer to have the person in the issuing state. And um, I've seen other comments about Kirsten, about the federal decision 909. Of course, we, we know the, the leaflets and we use always. Um, we, we did a huge research about the 909 two years ago and still I check from time to time the CEP and the Euro prison time. Yeah, exactly. And for 947 and uh, uh, 829, you can also find information on the on the CEP website uh, in the knowledge base uh, section. You can also find information about um, uh, different probation services in uh, uh, in different parts of Europe. Uh, we have the probation in Europe book that is uh, currently uh, updating. Uh, so you can find a lot of information about uh, how the, the measure, these measures are actually implemented and this can really help the judiciary and the competent authorities in general to, to have more confidence uh, in, in using these alternatives and probation decisions. And now I see that uh, our colleagues from CEP already uh, placed on the, on the chat uh, the links for, for different uh, for different uh, uh, information materials that we can use. Any more questions? No. Therefore, I would like to go back to my question. If you if you are aware in your jurisdiction uh, of any use of A to nine, do you know something about that in your in your own country? Yeah, we, we see on the chat room, in the chat room we see another uh, comment that is very uh, useful coming from our uh, colleague uh, Katarzyna Dudek from Poland, uh, again emphasizing the role of Bar Association and also uh, the cooperation with, uh, with different ministries. So, ladies and gentlemen, think about uh, the use of A to 9. Are you aware of uh, any uh, any uh, case uh, that uh, took place in your own jurisdiction? Hmm? In Poland, if we are here in Poland, do we have do you do we have any? Not in Sweden. Okay. Okay. Very difficult, Johan. I I took a lot of time, and I have to to share with you and our colleagues. I found one case, and I'm going to interview the prosecutor tomorrow with my feria voice about the, the only procedure I could find because I saw in the statistic, we use it four or five times in five years. It was like, you know, impossible to find a person using the decision 829. Yeah, it's still severely yeah. underused. Yeah. I will start with you in the future what they tell me tomorrow. Okay. So we should do another uh, webinar, I think, next week. <laughs> About the, the only case in, in Spain. <laughs> Why is it with Alemania and Polonia? Okay, I can see Maria. Welcome back. Do we have any more questions? Because the, uh, we're running out of time. <laughs> Yes, if we have uh, any more questions. Yes, we do have more questions. Uh, we prepare them very carefully. Um, uh, it's, it's a question that is uh, very much related to the, um, uh, to the POND project. Uh, if you would be to organize a, a training for the competent authorities in your, in your jurisdiction on the use of uh, 947 and 829, what sort of format would you use for that training? Would you have a... A meeting like face-to-face -face meetings, like the classical training, or would you use webinars or uh, different uh, leaflets, or what? What sort of uh, approaches would you use in your own uh, in your own country? Hmm? Do we have any brave participants trying to answer to this question?
It seems like we have a, uh, some sort of answer from the Netherlands coming in. <laughs> okay. That's... I can see that uh, Marco is typing. Very good. Excellent. Yeah, still reflecting on the, the leaflet uh, issue for the lawyers and clients about the possibilities of 809 and 947 and 909. Yeah, of course we can we can use this. In which language? Yeah. Please. They, they have uh, the brochures in English? All of them? Yeah, if, if, if these brochures or leaflets are available in English, can, can you find a way to send them over to CEP or to us? That would be very helpful because uh, we want to, we to can develop the, the training in the different inventory of resources in English. Yeah. yeah, actually, we do have them at CEP, so <laughs> we can take you can take part of that, Joanna Nestor. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And in Spanish. <laughs> Perfecto. Yes. What about the training? How? What kind of training would you like to see? E-learning. Okay. Under step two. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The e-learning materials that we have developed together. And it's still online, and this is still very useful. I was trying the other day. Yes, yes. This is actually the uh, the plan. We want to develop this e-manual, and then based on that e-manual, we want to do a, an online uh, a course that hopefully can be hosted by the Council of Europe. So uh, um, and maybe other uh, uh, hosts like TP uh, and the uh, European Judicial Network to see if we can uh, we can make it uh, as available as possible for for everybody. Okay, so e-learning seems to be uh, seems to be uh, the most uh, favorable one. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. So we are on the good track. And the animation, of course. <laughs> we did. A, I remember we did a short film to to show how how it works. Yeah. And also for for nine four seven, I remember that we we tested in one of the expert meetings. Yes. Maria. Yeah. Yes, we did. And and you can also find it on the CEP website uh, uh, as alongside with the leaflet that we already uh, produced, which is in English, but you're much welcome to, to translate it to any language that you like. And we also produced a short guideline for the leaflet is for, for clients, for the offenders. And we also produced a short uh, guideline for probation officers to explain the framework decisions in a easy access and sh short way. So there's a lot of material that you can already find on the CEP website, but of course uh, you can always inform more. Okay, I think we, we need to end this first webinar and it seems like it worked well, at least from my point of view with the technologies, technology. Uh, and thanks a lot to you, Joanne and Esther for sharing your knowledge on this. And uh, I still think you are experts in this field, even though it's it's much more to learn for everyone, of course, uh, especially on 829, as you mentioned several times. But uh, uh, please visit the CEP website for more information and the knowledge base there on the framework decisions. Uh, and thanks to all the participants for, for taking part of this first uh, CEP webinar. And thanks again, Esther and uh, Johan. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you very much. It's up to me to be Thank here. You. Bye. Bye.